Hello, my name is Arne von Königsmark and this time I would like to give you a demo of the more advanced features of my People in Motion plugin. So we get started by getting the Motion Manager and attaching the Unlock Motions tag to it and switching it off, uh, switching off the freeze, freeze Motion option here. Heading over to the content browser and getting the motion cloud and the character we would like to use by double clicking on their icons. Grouping the character below the motion manager will activate it. So the character already shows the idle standing default animation now. If you would like to have your character move along a specific path, you can attach this spline to the start and pass tab here. So let's say we click some animation pass or some uh, spline pass here in the top down view and attach this to the path link field, you have a couple of options here. First of all, you can decide if you would like your character to move directly on the spline or maybe a little bit to the side with an off, uh, offset. So first off, I demonstrate the on spline option. And the second um, parameter parameter would be the uh, number of the segment you would like to use. In this case the spline only have one segment so we don't have to change anything here. And you can invert the direction of movement. So normally the character would start in the first point of the spline and move towards the end of the spline but by using invert you can reverse this movement. So setting the start position you can see that the character jumps into place to the starting point and of course we should use a dynamic animation. You can see that now the character moves along the spline. Reaching the end of the spline doesn't stop the animation so the character will just follow along the last given direction of this assigned spline. If you like to use an offset for the character you don't use on spline, but just position the character maybe a little bit to the side and use the set start position again. So you can see that now the character is moving a little bit on the side. This could be handy if you would like to have two characters following the same spline. So let's say we have another one and we group it, group it under the motion manager assign this path spline to it. Maybe first use the on spline option so the character jumps into place here. When we uncheck it, move it over to the side a little bit, set a new start position and maybe use a little bit of a motion offset. Of course we would like to use a dynamic animation here as well. Using a little motion offset so that both characters don't have the same kind of footsteps. So you can see that now both characters follow along the path, but of course with an offset and the character moving inside this curve of course will be faster than the one on the outside. Uh, we already talked about the invert option, so I think it's quite obvious that now the uh, character will start here at the end. Makes sense to use on spline here. So that now the same spline can be used for two characters um, walking towards each other. There's one more experimental kind of feature using uh, or named char character interaction. 
uh, in combination with this look ahead distance. So the characters try to avoid each other by looking ahead if they find some other characters and then trying to move around each other. So this should work um, if both characters have enough room around them. So if there are too many characters around um, they will have problems to avoid each other. But you can see that um, they do a little bit of a side movement even uh, if they are moving along uh, a given spline path. So this could help uh, if you just have a few characters and you would like to um, be sure that there is no um, um, collision between uh, the characters. So let's have a look a, at another feature. Um, just getting rid of this uh, spline and the pass animation and I move the char character back to the center of the uh, world system here. Setting this as a starting position again. Um, you already know that the characters are moving along the negative z-axis if they have a dynamic animation. But you can also mix different kinds of animations. For instance, it makes sense to mix a static pose or animation with a dynamic animation. So in this case, you would um, choose the static animation you would like to use in first place and then you have the option to use a direction for this so maybe rotate the character to the side a little bit maybe he's having a look at some objects over here set this as a start position and we record this kind of animation then we go forward in time and say maybe around here he should walk away so we switch over to a dynamic animation and record this again. So this is all you have to do. So let's say what we have now. Character is having a look here at the side and now he's walking away following the negative z-axis again. So the direction helps to rotate the, ca um, the character out of the walking direction. Of course you can uh, do this again and again. So um, maybe uh, switching to uh, a static pose again, some idle um, animation, just recording, having a look again, having this static animation, switching over to walking away and then rotating again to this idle pose. So if you don't want this rotation after this second morphing animation here. You just can uh, um, keyframe this direction value. So let's say we keyframe this back to zero again while he's uh, still walking so that he will stay in place and um, is still facing the negative Z after the transition to a static pose. So this helps to um, add more complex animations to your character. Another thing you can do is to add different kinds of props to your characters and those props will change the uh, kind of animation you see. So let me just switch over to the timeline so we can get rid of those motion transitions here. You can see that the motions have their own type of keyframe and you can always come back here to see which kind of motion is used when and from here you can even change the uh, the kind of motion exactly if you like to edit your animation. So I'm just, just deleting those um, transitions and uh, now we have this uh, idle standing animation. 
idle standing. So we're switching this um, to use a prop such as a smartphone. You can see that the static animation is changed. So the character is now using a smartphone. So it's of course easy to attach uh, the smartphone prop here from the content browser to the hand so that now the character is using the smartphone here. This also works by using maybe a conversation. So the character is now holding the smartphone and of course has um, some facial animation. So he's talking, he's having a phone call right now. This also works with dynamic animations. So as the smartphone is attached as a prop, you can see that while the character is moving, he's still holding the smartphone and having a conversation while he walks. So there's some uh, talking animation attached to the head. And of course we have other props as well, so it doesn't have to use a smartphone. You can use a briefcase for instance, while he's uh, walking. So just switch on the back prop and attach the briefcase to the hand and then you can see that now the character holds the, uh, the briefcase in his hand while walking. We also have a nice trolley, a business trolley, uh, which has its own kind of animation. So switching the prop to be a trolley back, you can see that now the character is uh, pulling behind this uh, trolley and the trolley has also its own kind of animation attached to it. So you can do quite a number of variations with your animation, even more than uh, the list implies maybe, just by using different kinds of props. You can even um, add your own props of course. So let's say this is uh, some kind of box um, in front of your character. Maybe it's a shopping cart or something. Doesn't really matter. And you would like uh, your character to push this box while he's walking. So for this we have um, our own kind of IK and you can find this on the options tab. You can see that we have four options here for the arms and for the legs. If all are checked, this means that the character just uses the mocap data. But you can untick those um, options and from now on the character will use the null objects that are listed here in the target fields and those are already here grouped with each character. So from now on the character will have uh, his left arm attached to this null object here. So this makes it possible for us to um, group this card or box or whatever uh, below the root uh, null object of the character. So this cube will now start to move with the character. So the only thing we now have to do is to place this null object wherever you would like the hand of the character to be. And now you can see that the um, character is pushing the cube or the card or whatever. Or maybe we use a second arm as well. And you will notice that uh, not only the position of this null object is uh, used, but on also the rotation. So by rotating this, you can see that you can control the 
um, the yarn pose as well. So whatever kind of uh, position you would like the character to use for the hands. Of course the um, finger animation or the, the pose of the fingers uh, is not controlled by mocap now anymore because we switched off the um, the options for the arms in this case but you can go to the uh, joint hierarchy here and um, of course all joints can be accessed directly you can see these are the finger joints and every joint can be rotated to whatever you like the pose of the finger to be you can see here so this pose will stay as long as the options for the arms are switched off or of course can be just animated any way you like by using your own keyframes just in case if you would like to really dig into this uh, character animation stuff and of course the um, legs can be adjusted uh, just in the same manner by using um, additional targets so just might be nice um, for adjusting sitting animations so sometimes the seat is much higher or lower than already um, the, the already keyframed uh, mocap data so um, by this you can adjust the sitting height for instance or even use standing animations uh, to be used as sitting animations or leaning on a wall or something let's get rid of the cube you can see that now we have a conversation going on here conversation animation which has been a standing or static animation in first place But you can see that now you can adjust the pose any way you like. Maybe it's leaning on a wall like this. Again, you can adjust the rotation of the knee. You can see by adjusting just the orientation of the null object. So this is my own simple IK built into this character here. So this gives really some possibilities for endless variations you can add to the characters and to their mocap animations.